Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today I wanted to follow on with the coffee pot challenge. It's going to be one with a twist and I'll explain why. The reason I've got three cards on top here already is because I've already done the coffee pot challenge all by myself. The video did not load. It did not want to share it with you on YouTube and therefore I've done the coffee pot challenge but I'm going to do it again and I'm going to share what I've already pulled out so that you can join in if you would like. So if you don't know what the coffee pot challenge is, I have a selection of card prompts that I've put into my coffee pot tin and I have got things like buttons and gesso and rubber stamps. So the three cards are, we've got scraps, we've got lace and we've got digital kits. So those are the three things that I can use in my challenge or you could use in your challenge. So if you'd like to make something, it's scraps, lace and digital kit. Okay, so um, I've been flipping through this in, in recent videos. You may have seen, there's one, let me get this one. You may have seen me passing by this. And so on the front here, I've got digital image and it's a front and back flip. And there's a bit of a torn out other extra bit which I put on there. And I have used the lace at the bottom and then inside I've used some scraps of paper which in this case was a vintage map, a real vintage map with the age spots, all very cool. They're really interesting because you can add them, you can just tuck it into a tuck, you can pin it to the top but you can also put it over the top um, which is brilliant on a mini journal like this which we've been building up because these are the shorter pages it sits a bit further down so you haven't got all the bulk at the top okay. as you flip it over you also get the two decorative bits on either side and that I think works really nice with a shorter page so if you've got shorter pages in your journal and you're not quite sure how to decorate then this is an idea it slides off I've got a decorative paper clip and I've put a bit of sari silk over the top and flip and then inside some vintage ledger more lace at the top and this is another digital kit image that was a slice off of the edge of some other project left over from my guillotine and I've got a word there which is also a digital kit from Artie Mays and I will share what um, this these digital kits are in a second because what I want to do is recreate this one. I've got these lovely ones here. This is from the Torn Edge on Etsy and the collection is vintage French wallpaper. Stunning. Look at it, it's stunning. Old uh, French wallpaper. This one was very inexpensive. I did purchase it a long time ago I have to say a year or so ago so you would have to probably look at that you'd have to go back it's not going to be a recent one it's the torn edge I won't link it below because that's the sort of thing that I will forget so if I do I'll try but it's the torn edge on Etsy vintage French wallpaper and I've printed this off on 80 GSM paper and I'm just now thinking that I'm going to carry on using that was that one I'm going to take that out because that's now a digital kit and a scrap so for this you're going to need a ruler you can have a straight edge ruler you can have a deckled edge ruler rip ruler whatever you can get your hands on I find these incredibly difficult to get hold of but I will leave a link below I'm going to get rid of that white border straight away while it was there in position I lost the bird's wing but it was sort of clipped off anyway and uh, that bit we don't want use this as my guide 
I hope that's all right to have the bird like that. And then I just need to take that little bit off at the top as well. It's always best to put your shorter side under your ruler. Don't do it the other way around. It's very difficult to tear anything. If you try and tear the tiny bit off like that, sometimes you have to because you're dealing with a small sheet. But if you've got the length, you want to be turning your paper around and just ripping that and then it, the little bit will come off. Right, so if I flip this, if I do that, I'm going to have an upside down bird. I'm going to have one round the right way, but then on the other side it's going to be upside down. But it wouldn't be upside down if it's on its side, and neither would that be. Right, so this is a side flip, guys. So for this, you need your digital kit, you need some glue. What am I going to use? I'm going to probably use stick glue, and... I will need some fabric glue because I'm going to deal with lace today. I might even use this now, I've found this. This is my, um, you know, all paper, anything goes, universal, kolal, kalal glue in the little bottle there. So I may use that. <laughs> I like to have three glues on the go at any one time. That was a bit that leaked. Okay. And I'm going to use a brown ink, possibly a blue ink. And I'm just going to now think about what I'm going to have as my scraps of paper. Right, so I just folded that in half and uh, I'm going to just go over that with a bone folder. So that's a nice crease. And I think... So we've got birdies. Now we've got birdies on the side. So if I put that in. I've got the lines going the wrong way so that gets rid of that as an option. This is nice because I've got the leaves so that's going to work and this is also nice but I'm going to have to make that work. So I'll put that aside. So I'm going to go with this and just glue those two together and then now I've done my usual thing where I wanted to ink around the edge of that. But it is still possible if you do what I do and forget to do it. It just because I've got white edges, because you're dealing with a digital kit, it's really just copy paper. So as soon as you rip into it, you get the white edge and it very quickly doesn't look very authentic. It doesn't look like the wallpaper it's supposed to. So this is a sticky business now. But those little torn edges really look quite good with the ink on them. They look a bit burnt and that's because I'm using walnut stain and that is a very dark brown ink. Okay, I don't like that side. I like the side with the leaves. Bring that down there. Like that. I'm just going to put that right up on there with the other one and tear down and remove that. That's a nice scrap of something else. Mm. We just want to come round again with the ink on the other piece of paper that's now been added and then folding it over. flattening it down. Now because the glue's wet we're going to have that curling up. The more I handle the paper the more oldy worldy it looks. It's the, you know, don't be precious about smooth perfect paper. You don't want that. You want it to look worn, torn, tattered. That's the aim. In a junk journal, you want it to look a little bit like it's got a bit of character. 
just tear, tearing that bit off, don't like it. Okay. If this is the page, it's going to go like that. And then when you turn the page, you have the reverse. Sweet, I love it. And then what it wants is a little paper clip or something. Oh, oh, buttons popped up. Yeah, you could add a button, but we're doing lace today, not buttons. Here somewhere in my little lace pencil case. My lace case. Here we go. And, okay. So I've got this one, this one. And this one. Those two vintage colours went so well. It looks really nice, I think. These are my little sticks. I've just uh, wrapped them round the sticks and then I keep them in a pencil case. I don't think it is a pencil case actually. I think it's a um, makeup bag because it's got this lovely satin lining and then it just keeps the vintage lace safe. And uh, so that's how I tackle that. I've got a video of how I did this. You, just, you know, it's eyelets, cocktail, not cocktail, lolly sticks, aren't they? I think they might be called something else in the US. We call them lolly sticks because we would have a nice lolly on them. Let me know what you call this if you're from the US. And uh, that's very pretty. I like that one. And then this is quite big. So you could do like a ruffle along there because it's not very interesting. And then the blue may take away from the blue bird. Let's have a look. So that's big. If you if you like lace, use big lace. If uh, you like a more understated. Oh, how about how about that at the top? Um, white. Because he's got little bird got white in him so that's quite nice I could do that top and bottom mm. maybe you could have lace samples put in in there somehow that's an interesting idea isn't it little snippets of lace or something to give Oh, I'm getting stumped here, girls. Hang on, let me see, girls and boys. Let me see. Oh, that's nice. How about that? How about we decorate it all the way along? But rolled it over so it's sort of stuck on the other side. Is that too weird? Hmm. It won't work on the bottom because this bird is the blue the wrong colour. Oh my goodness, why can't I do this? Let's try this one. Put it on the edge. Well, that's nice. I like that. Do I like it top and bottom? I thought this was going to come together quicker because I've done it before, but actually it doesn't. Ooh, we'll get there in a minute, I'm sure. Something's something's going to come to me. It's got to be lace, because that's what's um, been said in the challenge. It's got to be lace. Oh, no, it doesn't have to be vintage lace, though, does it? Hang on, what else have we got? It could be... I've got this rather lovely cotton lace. Oh no. Oh, I like that a bit better. Maybe that. Cut this bit off here. And this bit. And limit the picture. I think I better go with that. But I'm not loving it. But I'm going with it because we just have to keep going. <laughs> you might not like it, but it's important to just not think about it. Just go with it. 
otherwise you get nothing done, you can't make a decision, and you overthink it. Let's overhang that. Good, that's what was bothering me. I wanted a little bit of distance between the lace and the bird. I don't like this sharp edge now, that's sort of not good. And uh, let me get this bit on. I don't know what the top and the bottom is or which way round this is supposed to go. So again, let's not think about it. Let's just pop that down, but have a little overhang on the top. And there we are. Okay. The glue is doing some sort of volcano-y thing. Um, maybe a bit of the vintage on top of the more modern. A bit of that. We are double lacing. Anyone else double lace their projects? Layered the lace, layer lace, layered, layering the lace. A lace layer. <laughs> oh, the glue is getting low. Okay, do I like that? Not really. No, I don't, but never mind. We'll go with it. What else? What else? Oh, pink. Now, this is a very pretty pink here, and I've got this sari silk. So we're now, we've done the challenge, so now I'm just fiddling. I'm just embellishing it. So I'm going to add this extra beautiful sari silk pink. It's sort of pink, and then it's got brown going on. How lovely is that? It's been dyed. I didn't do it. I wish I did. I might try it, but that involves buying a lot of dye and it's all very expensive. So it was easier to buy it from a seller. I bought this years ago, so I don't know if the lady still does it, but she was from Wales. And um, I can leave the link for some undyed sari silk ribbon uh, so that you could try this technique. But just FYI, isn't that lovely? The way the green just blends into that dusty rose pink. And I think that um, that echo, oh, hang on, do we want the colours that echo what's already going on in the picture? Probably. Probably. Or do we want to just put that little bit there just to finish that off? And then maybe, because this is a digital kit and this is a scrap, it's a scrap of a digital kit, maybe we want a word on the front this time, because I did have a word inside, which I think is fun when you open it up and you've got that little intrigue. It's quite nice to see the word inside, but nothing to stop us putting a word inside as well. I'm just going to use this glue because there was a little bubble of glue there and I'm sticking to fabric so I haven't inked done it again and I think I need to on this because it is again it's a digital kit and when you've got digital kits they just look a hundred times better with an inked edge even though that's an extra step and it it's very boring to watch It's just worth it for for that distressed vintage look. Okay. And now more fabric, so more stronger glue down there. Right, but it's nice to have bits rolling up and moving, adding texture and uh, intrigue. Flip it open. I'm finding that quite underwhelming inside. So we'll just have a look what other scraps I've got in this tray. Bit of vintage music paper down the side. What it is. Yeah, so I like this pretty paper, this paper that has um, got fibres in it. This is a handmade paper. And I'm just wondering now whether that would be quite nice to have the pages inside. So it's sort of a very, very mini booklet. Right, there's my marker. I'm just going to cut 
that off. Scrap. That's going to be in there like that. And then it's just a question of how to attach it. So what's going to look nice? A little bit of glue, I think, on that one. Let's ink, let's ink. Let's just ink on those edges. Do you see? Instant interest, even though you're not going to see it as much. Oh, but yes, you are, just on the edges there. So, we'll go down the centre now spine. Line up your paper. That could be another bit of digital kit if you've got something fun. Anything. Flip it over. It is going to be. And the other thing you could have done, uh, which I would have probably done, is sewn down the middle with a nice decorative stitch or something. Just a, even a straight stitch. But that would have required going to sewing machine. Right, we've got the sun now shining through. And there we go. Little booklet. Little booklet flip. These are all digitals. Um, so I could use these. These are, Oh, look at that. I love that. I love that. Could have a little label there, a worded label. label. That's sweet. Ooh, that fits. So these are digital. Beautiful. Right, little a little tuck, a little tuck, a little pocket. So I would just need three edges glued. Right. This glue is completely fine to use, but because I'm doing a demo, a quick one on a video, I need something that sets really fast. And that is the Fabri Tac. So, get it right, I need to come down this way. I'm gluing on three sides after I've inked, and I'm putting it there to embellish that bit there, there, and that's my little bit there. I could have put it there, but then I would have probably seen white on the edge from this pocket. This bit's white on the back. You know, they're just white. So had I put that there, you've got to be careful, you'll start seeing it, and then it looks horrible. Uh, and, but I would have got away with that because that is the same sort of tone plus it's vintage but even that isn't going to match so it's more inking for yourself so now you've got a place to store your bits and then um, so the idea is, it, once you've got all your components, you've worked out what you're going to do and what you're going to have, you could just have a little ink session of all of it, and then you won't forget. I don't know that it needs it as such. And I think I'd like it at the top, so that's where it's going. Um, do I want a bit of this? No, I don't think we do. I think we can call that a done, a done one. Little bit of thickness to it because of those extra pages. Scalloped edge. <laughs> I could never get these straight. No. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> so if you've got decorative scissors, that's a good one place to use your decorative scissors and uh, yeah that's just a little tuck bit there there we go wow 
So that is the coffee pop challenge to make flips using scraps, lace and a digital kit. See what you can come up with. That's going to be one step up from this one here. Lovely to have the word on the front and the little bit of lace framed there using sari silk ribbon or any scrap of fabric which ties in with the image on the front and the white lace there which I've just caught with the with the brown ink and I think that looks just quite nice because it's given it a vintage feel I might even just knock back that bright white there a bit and then the only other thing is on this side is I haven't done anything so I could just um, add a bit of lace there if I wanted to um, or I could add a label but that's going to be too big so I'm going to leave it but you can absolutely play around with that and enjoy making a bunch of those because they come together quite quickly when you get to, into your mind what you need to do uh, using very little supplies especially if they're scraps that was a scrap bit of of um, digital kit and then lining it with something interesting and it needs to be in the same colour tone for that to work and look great. If you put white in there, it just wouldn't. It would really, really make it look um, cheap, actually. It would it would cheapen it, not that bit, because that's it's got an interesting shape. But if that had been white paper in with a coffee dye, it wouldn't have worked. But because that's a unbleached sort of much nicer natural tone that's why that works and then you've got the plant fibers in there which links in with the leaves here you've got a botanical image interest on the sides and the whole thing looks organic that's why that works and um, and then ties in with what's going on here and then the little label is referring to plants with a soft green stem herbaceous plants and there's your daisies and then you've got the bird and the botanicals on the outside so this is a spring summer nature botanical lovely vintage really romantic so uh, yeah I need to make another mini journal with a less uh, vibrant front and find somewhere for this little bird to go and I did like the idea of these little pages maybe that's quite sweet isn't it oh just separate the pages something like that and then that just uh, just looks lovely in a junk journal well, I've had a lot of fun doing that, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed that and that gives you some inspiration to use scraps, lace and digital kit for the coffee pot challenge this week. If you'd like to um, add any pictures to show me, I can be found on Instagram under the treasured page. If you tag me, then find a way so I can see it. I would absolutely lo love to see what you've come up with using these three things here. And... Um, I will also encourage you to join the Facebook group where you can put your pictures up there as well. And I'll also leave some pictures of this on the Facebook group, which is the Treasured Page FB group, which you can join. Um, until next time, I hope you have fun with that. We'll be doing the coffee pot challenge again next week and I will pull three more things out and we can have a look at that. But uh, thank you for persevering with that because I did have a little bit of a, a lost video situation. I know that happens and I really hoped it wouldn't happen to me. I'm still finding my feet with this channel. Um, I can't thank you enough for all your support and I hope that you found that that was inspirational for you to go and make a whole stash of those to add to your journals. It'd be quite fun to have four and then you could add them. You could do a spring, summer autumn or fall and then a oh, Christmas one obviously gonna have a Christmas one that would be brilliant and they can just they can be orientated either to the side or from above and arguably 
from the bottom as well for something interesting or a bit uh, bit of a different look. So have a play and uh, see what you come, come up with. I'm sure that's not a new idea. It's just a flip booklet, isn't it? But uh, using those, limiting yourself sometimes just makes all the difference, gets your brain working in a different way. So there we are, guys. I hope that you find time to settle down into a craft this week and uh, do like and subscribe so that you see the other videos for this. And thank you all for watching. But above all else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.